Something remarkable has finally begun to happen inside a quiet facility in Southern California. Something that many people doubted would ever reach this stage. But the signs are now undeniable. A new generation of solar-powered mobility is taking shape, and the earliest units are no longer just concepts, renderings, or distant promises. They're being built, real bodies, real components, real progress. And today, we're going to walk through exactly what's happening behind those walls, because Aptera has officially started their low-volume production line. For months, a handful of reporters and technical insiders have been tracking Aptera's developments. A few days ago, one of those reporters revealed that she had been following the company's progress closely, gathering footage, conversations, and factory updates. That story has now surfaced publicly, and it delivers something we haven't seen in a long time. Physical evidence that Aptera isn't just moving forward, they're accelerating. The story begins inside their Carlsbad facility, where a small team is now assembling bodies using a jig shipped from CPC Group. This is a major milestone because the original strategy was to assemble the composite shells overseas. But Aptera chose a smarter path, one rooted in efficiency and control. Shipping the parts unassembled allows more volume in each container significantly reducing shipping costs while giving Aptera the ability to oversee precision manufacturing directly. And when you see the jig in action, it instantly makes sense. The technicians place the lightweight composite pieces into the frame, apply structural adhesive, and then lock everything together using a series of lever-based clamps. It's fast, repeatable, almost elegant. Watching the main body sections come together feels like watching engineering efficiency unfold in real time. But the real surprise arrives when you look around the facility. Instead of one or two isolated prototypes, there are multiple bodies being built at the same time. Four lined up side by side, and a fifth one that was shown earlier, indicating that Aptera is not just moving forward, but building in batches. This alone eliminates one of the most common rumors circulating for months, that the company didn't have enough units for testing, crash certification, or validation. The footage makes the truth unmistakable. Multiple validation vehicles are in the works right now. During the segment, the company's CEO explained that the assembly will follow a 12-step manufacturing process once at scale and when the line reaches full speed, around 40 units per shift could be produced. That number should make anyone watching the EV industry pause. For a company specializing in ultra-efficient solar transportation, 40 vehicles per shift is a statement. It signals readiness. It signals confidence. You can see the team assembling interior sections using the same jig system, clean, consistent, and clearly designed for repeatable workflows. But then, another interesting detail emerges. From the outside, the bodies are unmistakably futuristic, almost spacecraft-like. But under that dramatic exterior lies a surprisingly practical structure, one that blends familiar assembly processes with aerospace-grade composite design. And then there's the test vehicle. One of the bodies in the facility appears to be the same unit previously driven to Flagstaff during earlier evaluations. It features racing seats with a five-point harness, minimal interior padding, and an early version of the center console. There's evidence that the UI screen is installed, likely for software and interface testing. The exterior solar panels are already mounted, but the dash solar panel remains absent likely reserved for later integration. This test unit is clearly built for real-world evaluation, not showrooms. As the camera moves deeper into the facility, we learn that these vehicles are part of Aptera's validation fleet. These are the vehicles destined for crash testing, road trials, and early engineering assessments. 
they are not cosmetic shells. They are the foundation of Aptera's next major phase, certification. Then comes one of the most surprising discoveries of the entire story. Technicians are welding the roll cage by hand. This means that their large-scale production partner has not yet begun mass-producing the aluminum safety cage assemblies. The welded sections confirm that the earliest validation vehicles are being built using low-volume techniques, which is common at this stage, but still fascinating to see firsthand. It also confirms that chassis components are actively being shipped in as production ramps up. And then we get something unexpected. On a separate rack sit stacks of solar panels. Not just a few, dozens. Rear hatches, roof sections, hoods, and a collection of flat panels that appear to belong to Polydrops, one of Aptera's solar accessory partners. This means Aptera's solar production is not just active, but expanding. Their solar fabrication line is pushing out high volumes of components for both internal use and partner use further validating that manufacturing workflows are becoming more robust. Nearby, older honeycomb bodies sit parked, a reminder of Aptera's earlier prototype phases. You can see previous generation shells, including the wrapped unit that once made headlines during a global outreach effort. These earlier models represent the company's long path to validation a path filled with restarts, redesigns, setbacks, and breakthroughs. Seeing them alongside the new bodies creates a clear visual timeline of progress. Later in the segment, the CEO explains that becoming publicly traded has dramatically increased visibility. New suppliers, investors, and industry partners have begun reaching out, not the other way around. The company's public profile is drawing attention from groups that previously may have overlooked them. For a company developing solar mobility at scale, that influx of interest matters. A lot. And then we get one of Aptera's core messages, one that captures what makes their vehicle so different. As long as the vehicle sits outside, it is charging. Southern California sunlight alone can provide up to 40 miles of range per day. For many drivers, that means never needing to plug in. Never. A future where the car fuels itself simply by being outside. The CEO reaffirmed their goal of getting vehicles on the road by 2026, with multiple models planned in the future at different price points, depending on range and configuration. For a company once doubted, this is a bold and confident projection but the physical evidence inside that warehouse shows why they are able to make it. What makes this entire update so powerful is not just the footage, it's the momentum. You can see the activity, the parts, the people, the solar panels, the bodies lined up, the test vehicles, the jigs in motion. It is not theoretical, it is not speculative, it is happening. And that's why this moment feels different from previous updates. There is a rhythm to the work now, a sense of acceleration that goes beyond announcements or promises. The validation fleet is real. The components are real. The solar production line is active. The assembly jigs are being used. And the low volume production line has officially begun. For anyone who has been waiting, watching or supporting solar powered transportation, this marks one of the most exciting phases yet. The engineering is maturing, the manufacturing is underway, and the dream of a highly efficient solar-powered vehicle cruising American roads is no longer a distant vision. It's becoming tangible. Progress is here. The work is happening. And the future of solar mobility just stepped into its next chapter.